Wanna love like you mean like you just like you did Wanna walk like it's all like just like you did Wanna be like you live like you just like you Cause a heart that forgives Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to do something a little different today. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. It is the last Sunday of this month, the last time that we were able to take in just another day that the Lord has made for us. And I don't know about you all, but I'm gonna make it the best day. Give him the most highest praise. And we only do that here at the River Church, amen. So to our live stream viewers at home, welcome. Thank you so much again for joining us for another week of glorious atmosphere and worship. On behalf of the leaders of this house, Bishop Frank Elliott, Pastor Phyllis Elliott, we are so glad that you decided to worship with us this morning. You continuously choose us week after week, the River Church, and we appreciate you so much for that. Here at the River Church, we are changing nations by changing lives, and we want to take a moment to encourage you. Open up those ears. Open up those hearts. Be ready to receive everything that this atmosphere of worship just everything that our live stream has to offer this morning. Thank you so much once again for joining us. We appreciate it and we appreciate you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God. Come on, can you just open up your spirits right now? Amen. As we get ready to worship a mighty, great, and awesome God. We want to declare that in this place today. Come on, help us say, say, my God.
Here we are today, Father, just another day. And we are raising at your word because of your faithfulness, because of who you are. You are God all by yourself. You are the one that sits in high and look low on us. You are the one that created us in your own image and likeness. You are the one that gave us your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Die, shed his blood for us so that we can have relationship with you. So we can listen to your words. And we can rise on your word and not fall. And when we fall, we can get up because of your word. So we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. Everything you said about us will come to pass because we have the faith, the faith like the centurion who believed. He just hear about you and he believed and his servant was healed. So we believe by the words that we hear about you from the pulpit, from the great man and woman of God. And we bring it back to our home so our home can know how great you are. You're a God that never changed. Your word is what changed us. So we thank you for your goodness and your mercies. We thank you for your everlasting love. So here we are today. We come to praise you. We come to worship you. We come to say hallelujah. Because you are truly truly an awesome God in our ministry here there's nothing that we lack you have already provided everything that we need so we thank you in advance for what you're going to hope to us in the future we just want to praise you and glorify you we thank you for the great man and woman of God that you're placing to our life to lead us and direct us into the path that we should go because they're following your word and as they follow your word we are following them so that we can be rich in the things of God hallelujah glory to your name Jesus Holy Spirit we invite you here with us today sit with us so that we can see the glory of God as we celebrate God the Father, my God, how great you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, we are responding to your
how great our God is. We serve a mighty, mighty, and awesome great God that deserves a great praise. Do you have something you want to release to him right now to let him know that he's great? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, and we're here to worship and serve this great God. Hallelujah. Are you going to worship with us today? Hallelujah. Oh, come on, clap your hands as we're here to worship him. Let us worship, let us sing. Hallelujah to the King. Let us lift our voices high. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh. Come on.
name of our God. Hallelujah. We praise the name of our Lord. Hallelujah is the highest praise. So we give him our hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah, for we honor the Lord. We're so grateful to be into the house of Ikua. Just another day that the Lord has kept us. Hallelujah. For I heard the sister say this morning that when she looks back over her life, mark my, 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 and we simply begin to think things over, for the Lord has not left us. He has been right here with us. Jesus. For the Spirit of the Lord is here, can you feel it? The evidence is all around us. For the Spirit of the Lord is here, help me sing The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord. of the Lord is here. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around The evidence us. is all around For the Spirit of the Lord
Father. Your evidence, your evidence, God. It's all around us. Spirit of love. God, we call for a miracle. A miracle of love. Come on, do I have anybody believe in the Lord for a miracle? Spirit of love. You said that we shall see you. Signs and wonders shall follow us.
fresh on us, Lord. Fall fresh on us, Lord. Lord, we lift you up this morning and we give you praise. We give you praise and we give you glory, God, because it belongs to you, Father. Because everything I am, Lord, belongs to you, oh God. For there is none like you in all the earth, Lord. So we lift our voices and we lift ourselves in praise to you, Father. Hallelujah, because we know, Lord, it's all, it's all about you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I just want to please your heart. My God. I just want to worship you. I just want to see your face. I just want to love on you. Say, I just want. I just want to your I just want. 
God for all of you that are here, those watching by way of live stream. Pray that you've enjoyed the worship. You can be seated. We thank God for the song selections. I will say yes. And dealing with the fact that we know it's all about him. And I was thinking as they was worshiping, the times we're living in, 2022, all the things that transpired due to COVID, so many things have changed. So many people lost loved ones. People lost jobs. In essence, in many cases, people lost hope. Because things just kept getting worse and worse. And even now they're talking about the economy is almost in a recession. And many people are blaming it on the Democratic administration, but things don't get like this overnight. It's a process over time that causes things to begin to come into a certain state of being. But the good news is, is that God is in control. It talks about in the book of Romans, it said one man esteem is one day above another day, and another man esteem is another day alike. But let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind that God is in control. It's just another day. And when I start seeing that time and situations don't have no bearing, on what I'm going to become. You're going to be everything God said you're going to be. Time, a day, a period of time of you cannot determine what the outcome is going to be of my life. What did God say about me? And when I say yes to him, I'm saying yes to your authority and your sovereignty. Just another day, just the time where I, I tell people every day, I said, tomorrow belongs to God. So when we woke up this morning, that gave me an opportunity to do some things differently. Every day I have new opportunities. That's the beautiful beauty about of just another day, is that every day I have opportunity that I can make a difference that I can change some things, that I can look at things from a different perspective. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If I think I'm a winner, I'll always be a winner. Because that, that another, a different day don't determine what I'm going to be. The Bible said it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, we shall be just like him for we're going to see him as he is. Let a man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And not really look at things as they are. Because as we live every day, it's a lot changing. Things are changing. But the good news is God remains the same. We've been on this series just another day, and this is the 31st of the month. Uh, and, and another month gone by, another day gone by, some more time have gone by. And time deal with error, deal with changing over. We're changing over. Most people will flip their calendar tomorrow. Some people flip it tonight. Some people flipped it already because they said July is over. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my cal calendar to August. But the, the, the thing is, when you look at the crossing over from one thing to the next, there are more possibilities. Somebody said possibility. It's a 
Uh, but that's what I love about God, that, 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 that you, there's always more possibilities. I'll look at somebody and say, by this time tomorrow, the thing that's bothering you today might, ah, uh, shy, yeah. The thing that's bothering you today, by this time tomorrow, uh, it, it could be gone. And, and, and what I love about it, I heard somebody preaching this week, and they said something that I always say. They said, the thing that you was uh, really bothering you last year, it's not even the thing that's bothering you now. You have a new situation now. And it, it was, last year, this time, was stressing you, wasn't stressing you last year. So that's a good news because that's an indication that this too will pass. Oh, yeah, this too will pass. So we have to understand that a man must not take a certain course merely because others do it. Tell your neighbor, I'm not trying to worry about what everybody else do. I'm worried. See, I, got, I, I got to deal with me. Come on here. Come on here. Tell them, I, I ain't got time to deal with what's going on with you. I need to deal with me. Anybody in here want to talk today? I need to deal with me. I, see, that's what's wrong a lot of times. We're so focused on trying to see what someone else ought to be doing. But I need to deal with me. I, I, I'm just talking to me. That I just need to deal with me because there are some things that I need to deal with that's going to make me a better version of myself. Yeah, I'm going to be a better version of me. I need to be a better version of me. Amen. A better version of me. And so when you look at that, you have to look at because others do it don't mean you got to do it. I don't have to do what everybody else do. Amen. Unless he is justified by faith. You have to do it by faith. Tell your neighbor it's faith. I need faith that tomorrow is going to be a better day for me. Tomorrow is going to be brighter. Tomorrow is going to be a brighter day. I, 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 see, every morning I wake up, I always tell myself, this is going to be a good day. And it's not necessarily because of anything that's happening. I just make up my mind that it's going to be a good day. Because yesterday is gone, and I don't care how much I focus on what happened yesterday, it's not going to be have any foundation for what I do today. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. And so we've been dealing with this just another day, and we, we hammered so much about the credibility of God. Somebody said the credibility of God. Uh, that's what you got to know. God is a credible resource. He's a credible. What does credible deal with? Credible deal with the quality of being able to be trusted. Tell your neighbor, I believe God. Uh, he's trustworthy. See, I, that's what we was talking about earlier this morning. That's the essence of your possibilities being fulfilled. Is that I believe. The disciples said, I believe. Help my unbelief. They believe. So the credibility of God deal with his trustworthiness. And his reliability. Tell your neighbor, he haven't failed me yet. Oh, I it out. He's a dependable God. He has integrity. He has character. He has a quality of being convincing. God, tell your neighbor, God can cause you to believe. Come on here. He's a convincing God. He can convince me that he's worthy to be praised. He can convince me that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. He can convince me that he has the authority to do it. Amen. There was talking in Bible study this morning said the satyrian came and said lord uh, uh my servant is sick and they said they was some of the people was trying to tell him he was worthy but then he said i ain't worthy for him to come in my house just speak a word tell your neighbor that's what authority is you just gotta speak a word his word carries weight oh glory to god his word carries authority his word carries validity his word carries sounding when i when god speak a word then that thing has weight. Amen. If you put it on a scale with your feelings and what he said, the, what he said will outweigh your feelings. Yeah, yeah, let me move on. So we wrestle with time because a lot of time we think it's not, gonna, God can't because it haven't happened yet. I just look at somebody and tell them, say, I knew it haven't happened yet, but it's not coming by my plan, schedule, or my arrangement. It's coming according to the set arrangement of God. God has a set time, and when God's time is come, ain't no devil in hell can stop you 
for moving forward. He's a credible God. I'll tell your neighbor, he's credible. He has credibility. And then, see, and the thing is, if you really believe he's a credible God and you believe the Bible, then you can boldly say the Lord is on my side. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, the Lord is on my side. I, I don't know about what, what's going on in your life, but all I know about me, the Lord is on my side. Any believer that, ah, yeah, that believe that the Lord is on my side, look at somebody tell them, the Lord is with me. That's what you don't know. You wonder how I keep doing what I'm doing. The Lord is with me. You wonder why I haven't broke down under the pressure. The Lord is with me. You wonder why I haven't lost my mind. The Lord is with me. You wonder why you don't see me flipping out because everybody else flipping. The Lord is with me. Oh, glory to God. He's on my side. Some of us will see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means, I'm old side. That means the Lord never and in mercies and grace is bestowed upon me. That means his favor is on my life. That means he's going to help me. <laughs> I'll tell you, neighbor, God is helping me. Amen. Glory to God. God, knowing God was on your, knowing God is on your side, it caused you to live free. I'll tell you, neighbor, I'm free. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not driven by fear. I'm not driven by the unknown. I'm not bit driven by what can happen through situation. The Lord is on my side. So the fact that he's on my side, he lets me know that I'm free. I am free. I will not fear because God is with me. God provides us with the necessities for life and our existence. So I tell you, neighbor, I'm here because of God. I'm trying to break up some stuff here. There's some stuff need to be broke up. I got to break it up. Tell you, neighbor, I'm here because of God. 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 So the only reason I'm in existence is because God is on my side. He supports me. He helps me. Amen. He helps me. He helps me. He helps me keep going. He enables me. Oh, yeah. He empowers me in every condition. I don't think I got no help in here. He empowers me. Wherever I end up, he gives me power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all that. Well, he empowers me. Y'all look at somebody and say, God empowers me. Me. Uh, that's what my mindset ought to tell me that he governs my affairs I don't hear no hell he governs my affairs and, and I, my life is hid in Christ and God. I continue because of who he is I don't go on my own might or my own strength the only reason you see me continue is because the Lord helps me he helps me Oh, yeah, in every trying circumstance, I've been through hell and hot water, but he helps me. Oh, glory to God. The word becomes my reassurance. Tell your neighbor, I've been reassuring. Oh, that, see, see, I have pending success. Tell somebody, oh, my sin. <laughs> you, ever, you ever did a deposit and it said pending? That means it, it, it's not cancer, but it's going to take a little time before you can... <laughs> Before you can access it, tell your neighbor, my, I is pending what he said about me. I feel you right here, God. He reassured me that my, the word is pending over my life. And, and it's just a little while longer and God going to do what he said. He going to do Come on, y'all, raise y'all happy self. I'm just reviewing a little bit. Uh, so you have to understand that, that it came a time when Joshua understood that he was going through some stuff, even though he had conquered something, there was still some pending word. Tell you, neighbor, I've got a few blessings. I have some things God has said about my life has come to pass, but there's about two or three other things they are still pending. And in that day, I'm going to get the authority. I'm going to be like the man of God. That whatever I need, I'm going to declare it. I don't care if time has to be still to get me where I need to go. I'll speak to the sun. I'll speak to the moon. I'll speak to the atmosphere. I'll speak to time until time to be still because things are pending in both shot. Things are pending in my life. It's pending. It's pending. Oh, it's pending. So Joshua was dealing with a situation and he stirred up enough faith to speak to something that he had never saw before. 
never saw nobody stop the moon. Nobody said, never saw the sun be still. But he said, that God that I serve, I have pending success. Tell you never pending success. Uh, uh, yeah. See, oh, I'm about to run with that on my own because I know there's a lot of promises. Uh, and he said, all the promises of God are yea and amen. He done said a lot of things about my life that haven't come yet, but I know they're pending. Oh, glory to God, because they're pending, I'm going to keep holding on. To every word he said because watch this hmm. well y'all sit down sit down sit down, sit down y'all i know y'all want to y'all 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 happy but sit down amen <laughs> so 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 see you don't see it sometimes but god is bringing you center stage look at your neighbor say god is bringing you center stage you've been in the background too long come on here so that, yeah, that was good you played the background but it's now have come a time that you come in center stage why you need to come center stage because god can't use you in the background he got to bring you to the forefront because when he brings you to the forefront, all eyes is going to be on you. And it's not going to be because of what you're doing. They're going to see God inside of you and say, look at what the Lord has done for them. Somebody said center stage. I, I know you've been sitting here waiting on Bishop to preach, but then tomorrow might be your day. Come on here. Tomorrow might put you center stage. I know. I just got you scared then. Hey, Amen. Because it... Because the system you have been trusting in has not been sound. Some of you have things that you've been trusting in is not adequate. It's not sound. Because you trust it because you thought it worked for somebody else. But you ought to find you a good neighbor and say, what God going to do for me, you ain't going to never be, you may have never seen it before because I have not seen it and ear have not heard. It, <laughs> it ain't entered the heart of it. Tell you what's about to happen for me. You might have never seen it before, but it's going to be all God. Come on here. It's going to be all God because he said, yo, I have not seen it and your ears have not heard it. So I got validation from the word that God is doing something special and something is changing in my life. Oh, shit, be here. Okay. You center stage because tomorrow belongs to God. And do you have enough faith to draw from what God has supplied you with? Told them in, in Bible study this morning that I, I got a, a greater understanding of a word because I'm starting to see that the reason I need faith, tell you, neighbor, he's talking to you. The reason I need faith is because everything I'm believing for is already been done. Didn't he say it was finished? And so my faith is necessary for me to access what's pending. Oh, y'all, like see, 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 so if I don't have faith, that's why he said without faith, it's impossible to please God because everything that I'm believing for has already been produced. I just need to know how to access what's pending. Oh, do you have anything to draw with? The woman came to the well, and Jesus said, get, woman, give me water. And she said, the well is deep, and you don't have nothing to draw with. He said, listen here, lady. He said, if you knew who I was, you would ask me to give you water, and I'll give you some water that'll never run dry. I tell your neighbor, God never runs out of miracles. Uh, yeah, he never runs out of miracles. And so just because he blessed me today don't mean that you might not be next in line. Uh, tell your neighbor, it's pinned. Tell him it's pending because I'm going to add to my faith virtue and I'm going to add to my faith some substance because I can't just believe I got to take action. Go. Without faith, without, without faith is without works, it's uh, dead. Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, according to Hebrews 4 and 2. But the word didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Tell your neighbor, faith. Uh, to ask them, do you have something to draw with? Faith, 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 faith. We used to sing a song when we were growing up. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little. Tell your neighbor, just a little bit of faith. Just a little bit of faith. So, so, so then we, we, we journey this month, we went down and we saw a, uh, a situation where they were suffering famine. Anybody in here 
going through a little tight season. Amen. It, it's that things been tight. Amen. And the prophet came and told him, amen, that is by this time tomorrow, things was going to change. And it was just another day. He said, this time tomorrow, things are going to change. And watch this. And so did not know, these lepers sit not at the outside of the gate, did not know that they was going to be the vessel that God was going to use to bring hope to some other people. I stopped by the river church today. Oh, shot. Tell some of you that you've been walking around like you got leprosy. You've been acting like you had nothing, amen, to offer. But God going to use some of you that look like you don't have nothing to bring to the table. God's going to use you to come and cause the other people to be blessed because you're going to have enough faith to say, I got nothing to lose. Who am I talking to here? I got nothing to lose. I done did everything else. I done tried all of these other things. I got nothing to lose. I'm talking about three people. I don't have nothing to lose. I just as well believe God because I don't have nothing to lose. So I might as well believe him. Come on, y'all sit down. Why y'all don't sit down and let me preach? And so sometimes when you, when you know you don't have nothing to lose, you got to reevaluate. You got to reevaluate. Tell your neighbor, re reevaluate your life. Look at what sources are high. Look at what you've been trusting in. Look at what you've been relying on. Look at how you have utilized what you have been given. What have you done with the word of God? Amen. Well, look at how you have taken what you heard and did nothing with it. I got to do a reevaluate because something about reevaluation, it go back and pull up the facts. Somebody said the facts. Oh, just show me your facts. Oh, show me your facts. I need to no. Do you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed? Then you'll be able to. You got to see what kind of faith you got. You got to do a reevaluation. Do you really believe God? Do you really believe God? Do you believe that he's able? Or do you believe that he can do what he said he'll do? Do you believe? Actually, but do you believe? Joshua's success was the devotion he had to the Word of God. Tell your neighbor, that's your source. Huh? Tell him that's your source. You, you can believe for anything you want to believe, but if you can't find it in the Word, it has no source. Huh? You need it. So, and he told Joshua, he said, be strong and of good courage. Amen. Because the people, I'm going to give you the land. Some of you don't even have a clue what God want to do in your life. You've been standing around on the outskirts. You've been coming to church. You've been going through the routine. But you never took time to learn this God we're talking about. The God I'm talking about is Alpha and he's Omega. He's the first and he's the last. He's the beginning of here. Action neighbor, have you took time to get to know this God he's talking about? The Bible says he's omniscient. That means he know where everything. He's uh, He's not, uh, nothing catches him by surprise. Omnipresent. He's everywhere. At one time. Who in the world you know can be at your house, at my house, at their house, at their house? And, and you don't have to feel like you're left out because he's omnipresent. He's always there. He's never absent. Yeah. Hey, my Lord. Let me calm my little happy self down. This is God. We tell you, neighbor, this is the God we're talking about. Tell them, yo, today, only prepare you for tomorrow. Because when you figure out what didn't work today, you can make better decisions of tomorrow. Say, so reevaluate. Come on here. You can make better decisions for tomorrow. Because when you learn how to rise up and stand in your position, you learn how to, hey, amen, I don't want the movement that I'm taking. It's going to move me into the place God wants me to be. I'm going to actively go after God. Anybody going to actively go after him in this season? You're not going to sit around waiting on anything to happen because you understand everything is completed. I'm going to actively pursue pursue him. I'm not just going to say I'm seeking him, but you're going to know I'm seeking him because you're going to see me laying prostate on my face crying out to God. You're going to see me reading and studying the word of God because I understand that the word is the source uh, and the strength of my life. So if I get the word of God, I got everything. But if I don't have no word, I got nothing. So we're going to respect this covenant. Tell you, neighbor, I got a covenant with God. I was sharing yesterday. See, you don't understand covenant. See, when you got saved, God made covenant with you. 
<laughs> when you got saved, that's why God broke covenant with you. And that's why when you came into the kingdom, he said that, that, that now you're taking on his name and you're taking on his attributes and his character. Just like a man when he get married, he, don't, he marries a woman, but then the woman gives up her right to her old name. Now, I know this 2022, they put hyphen stuff in there, but that ain't Bible. Do you hyphen it if you want it. That's your business. But when you leave one, he said you leave your mother and father and you cleave to your wife. You ain't supposed to have no hyphen in there. I know y'all got them in there. You might as well say, man, I done saw your hyphen in there talking about that's why you can't be totally free and loyal to your husband because you still trying to hold on to that other name, that other man, that uh, oh, y'all ain't going to talk up in here. Amen. But if I gave up that other man, then I don't want his name. Come on here. What do I still want with a name that I'm done with? Why do I? Oh, yeah, ain't nobody going to say nothing, but I feel God here. You don't hold on to names that you are done with. What you got that name in your name still for? When a man married a wife, when my wife, now watch this, she had a cute little name too. Her name was Hope. She had hope she was going to meet me. <laughs> this girl had hope she was going to meet a good man. Yeah, she was going to meet her a good man. Her, her name was Hope, Phyllis Hope. But she stopped hoping when Edward came along. Because she took on Eguit. Because that name has some characteristics and attributes. When you, you Google that name right now, and it just, right now you don't have to say river, but if you Google Eguit, it's going to pull up rivers. Because that the name is associated with other things. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. There's something about the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you take on him, the Bible says he has a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, somebody scream Jesus. The Bible said demons tremble at his name. Is there any demons in this house today? I believe if some of y'all got authority, would scream Jesus. You would drive them demons out. Somebody keep saying Jesus. Keep saying Jesus. Keep saying. All the devils are shaking right now. All the demons are trembling right now. Scream it three more times. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Woo. <laughs> It's something about the name. You got to understand a name carries authority. Oh. See, when you know about the name, you realize that it's just another day. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee going to bow. Because you're going to understand that he reigns in supremacy. You're going to understand that he going to be the best thing that ever happened to you. He's an all-sufficient God. That means he's adequate in all his ways. He know how to get the best out of you. He being what necessary in every situation. He's El Shaddai. He's all-sufficient. He's more than enough. Whatever you need, he's more than that. Look at somebody and say he's more than that. He's sovereign. That means he reigns with authority. That means, amen, he's a supreme authority in the earth realm. He never changed. Oh, glory to God. That's what I like about him. He never changed. He has dominion. That means he control all power, all authorities. He's whole. He created the whole earth all by himself. He's consistently being God in your life. Somebody say Jesus. For oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. And so, <laughs> since I done crossed you over to next month anyway, God gave me for next month that there's power in the name of Jesus. And God told me uh, that when we start declaring that name, uh, every demon in this house is going to be set free. I don't know what spirit uh, 
you've been dealing with. Uh, but he said there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, and as we declare uh, the power that's in his name, uh, captain's going to be free. Captain's going to be loose. Somebody said, loose them in Jesus' name. Loose them. In Je loose them. Oh, I feel deliverance in this house. Somebody shout, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. Somebody say, Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Deliverance taking place all over this place because their authority is in his name. Power in the name of Jesus. And when you look at a name, it identifies uh, the way a thing is known. Uh, Jesus is known by his dominion. Uh, he's known by his power. Uh, who else came down uh, through the womb of a virgin, uh, stepped into time, uh, impregnated a virgin, uh, told her she was going to have a child, uh, never been with a man, uh, but God uh, was able uh, to produce uh, Jesus uh, because uh, he needed a lamb uh, without spot uh, or without blemish. Uh, he came down himself uh, and impregnated a virgin. Somebody said Jesus, uh, and he said to him, uh, his name uh, shall be called Jesus, uh, the Lamb of God. Uh, take away the sins of the world. Uh, oh, you just don't know uh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Any of you have anything you want to be free from? Name it. And then scream Jesus three times. Name it. I'm not coming out there. Three times. And watch deliverance take place. Power! 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 His power in his name. Come on. Deliverance in his name. Healing in his name. There's healing in his name. Come on, say, say Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Deliver in his name. Set free. In his name. There's power in his name. There's authority in his name. There's healing in his name. There's healing in his name. Call him Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I see, I see captains being free. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, say, Jesus, Jesus. Say, Jesus, Jesus. There's power in his name. There's power in his name. So much power. So much I'm trying to go on, but I feel healing. I feel healing. I feel healing. I feel deliverance. I need y'all to grab your belly. You're not, not y'all. No, y'all got to say it. But everybody else. Well, y'all can go ahead. Yeah, y'all might need deliverance. Go ahead. Grab it. I'm not playing. 
There's about to be mass deliverance. I want to preach, but I feel that the atmosphere is conducive right now. I don't care what that thing is. You're about to be free. And it's never coming back. Because when we shout Jesus, you're going to literally feel it. Come up and out of you. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? We're going to call it three times. Because three days he rose. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right, right now. Y'all ready? Right, go. Jesus. 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 what I did because in preparation of this topic God said to me that there's going to be mass deliverance that take place and ain't nobody going to have to lay hands on you now you can be cute if you want them. you can go through the formalities if you want them but God said this is your moment to be set free because at the name of Jesus every knee go down every tongue go be come on Wow!
declare that every knee will bow to the name of Jesus. That shows you the power that's represented in his name. It carries us responsibility. Just like the president, I don't care how many charges been against you. If a president give you clemency, it don't matter what charge has been brought against your life. And so when Jesus came on the scene, he had all authority. And he said, I'm going to loose every one of them from the bondages of their past. God gave Jesus a name. And the name represents his distinct characteristics. His name represents status. The Bible said no other name that a man can be saved but by the name of Jesus. So when we understand that, we understand the Lordship that's in his name. Acts 4.12 said there's salvation in no other name under heaven given among men. So the only way you can be saved was by acknowledging the name of Jesus. And so if you believe you saved by acknowledging the name of Jesus, then if you acknowledge the power in his name, you can be set free from every other name. I don't care if it's molestation. I don't care if it's heartbreak. I don't care if it's uh, betrayal or denial. He said, add his name, every knee gonna bow. And sometimes, see, you can get so caught up with church. That's why I've been dealing with a moment. See, God is creating moments. 
for you to release these things. Now, if you come in here being cute because you think, well, that's just not how I am. But the moment comes with authority. And because his name is above every name, and I become his representative, if I tell the devil to loose you, he has to let you go. He's not going to force you. But when I declare that the devil got to go, if you really want him to go, he's the elite. Now, by the authority in me, I declare by the authority in Jesus' name that every demonic force, every stronghold, everything that's holding God's people, now by the authority in me, I command them to let you go. Now you can hold it or you can release it. Go.
let, allow me to know that this entire month is going to be a time of being set free from everything that you are sick and tired of. Because you can't be free from things you love. But those things that you want to go, God said this month, when we declare this topic, there's power. Power. He said this topic, power in the name of Jesus. That's the name that has all the authority. And we're going to acknowledge that name. And I declare the decree. You're going to see mass deliverance. Some of you that didn't think you need deliverance, go get delivered. Some people say, ain't nothing wrong with me. But when you find yourself cycling, something wrong. Go, God is a progressive God. God gave Jesus his name because Jesus was given his name because he would save his people from their sin. How did Jesus save us from our sin? Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead to save us from our sin. When you understand that, Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And this is why I told you earlier. He said, for God was with him. See, when you learn that God is with me, ain't no devil can hold you when you realize that God is with me. It said he was able to drive out demons because God was with him. And then it goes to Isaiah 61 and 1. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. And he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the opening of prison doors to them that are bound. Tell your neighbor the name, there's power, the power in the name of Jesus. And power in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given. And the government, the governing authority, shall be upon his shoulder. Watch this. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I'm going to tell you, help, help you understand this month the authority that comes in a name. A name carries authority. When your name has credibility, you can say something and things has to line up to what you said. That's the authority in Jesus' name. And when you understand that, that authority in his name literally means ruler. He rules and reigns. Ain't nothing happened to you that God don't have the power to free you from. Power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, rest yourself. I'm, I'm going to stop right there. I ain't going no further. How <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So that lets you know when that songwriter was writing that song, they had some understanding. When they were saying there's power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. So look at all the other things you've tried to use to be free. Other than using the name that's been given above every name. The Bible said the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow.
Now, next Sunday, maybe I'll let them sing the song for you. Maybe you'll get it then. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. To break every chain. You know what that means? Don't matter what it is. Don't matter what's the name of it is. Because all of it come under the authority of the name of Jesus. See, you've been telling people all about your problems, right? Well, you don't, this is why I'm like this. I, 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 that don't mean nothing. The name of Jesus breaks every chain. But if I got, I have to acknowledge that name as being the name that has the ability to loose me from the mother name. Some of you bound by a name that you was in love with. Yeah, you with that name got you tormented. You hear that name, you quench. Because it left you scarred. But Jesus got the power. Masha, give me. To break every chain, every yoke, every bond. So when we talk about power in the name of Jesus this month, I need you to see yourself being totally free. Don't come in here playing. Because God demonstrated it today. Soon as we start talking about the power, deliverance start taking place. Didn't he say he was going to do it? I told them on the phone the other night. I said, when we start on this topic, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to start today. Because <laughs> next month starts tomorrow. But the but Lord told me, he said, things going to happen this month. Because you're declaring the power. In the name of Jesus, going to see captives being free. You can come in here and get nothing. But there are some people that have made up their mind. I don't want to be like this. It's not my will to be like that. I don't want to be like this. And if, if Jesus has the ability to free me, this is going to be my month. Matter of fact, it's just another day. Today is my day. Change my name. He'll change your name right now. He can change your situation. He can change what you talk about. Come on here. You want to talk about what you've been through? God can change your name. You'll be like, oh, no, but I met a man. <laughs> yeah, I met a man. Yeah, remember that woman at the well? She was there drawing water. She done had a lot of men. Jesus said, woman, draw me water. Oh, you ain't got nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Jesus said, listen, lady, if you know who it was talking to you, you will ask me to give you some water. Because he knew that when she recognized who was standing before her, oh, go by the outside, it was going to change her life. And it was amazing because once the woman discovered that he was the Messiah, he said she ran back to the city. And the men that was coming after her, she said, come on, I want to come, I want to come, God needs you to come see a man. Isn't that some crazy stuff? She, she used to be the one that entertained the men. Now she's telling the men, come here, I want to take, I want to take you, I need to take you and let you meet a man. Because what you were doing was all right. It was all right. But I met a man that just didn't minister to my flesh. She told him to come see a man. And that's why church has become like it is. You have too many people talking about Jesus, but they really not experience total freedom. Because when you really experience total freedom, you can't help but tell somebody. That's why the other songwriter said, said I wasn't going to tell nobody. I couldn't keep it to myself. So this is going to be a powerful month. Powerful month. Powerful, powerful month. Powerful month. We're getting ready to let you go. Thank God for all of you watching on our live stream. And pray that God continuously, continuously, continuously increase you, multiply you, and feed you the good and grafted word of God. God wants to free you. There's power in the name of Jesus. And this will be your season to experience total freedom in the Lord. Amen.